sure. Uh, I'm, I'm talking uh, right now. Get Dan to uh, uh, get his mouth uh, by his beard. It feels just like a pussy there. It's a good sound in the radio. Yeah, yeah, to get him to take his teeth out. And with all that hair on his face there, it feels just like an old whore pussy. And that's W-A-T-V-M-S, Michael J. McGrigian, over 1323 Panorama Point Way in Kodak, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he swallows, too. He, he will swallow. You just have to knock him on top of the head. So that he a swallow, boy. And he swallows. Michael J. McGrigian, this is what he does. Dana, I'm coming across with clown, Dana. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you sound good, huh? All right, Teddy. Uh, just, you know, tap him on the head there. He'll swallow when you get ready. And WQVMX doing his famous Gidmark Corming routine. That's Michael J. McGregor, 3023 Panorama Point Way, Kodak, Tennessee. The reason why I know this is because I sent my guy over there. He DF'd him, removed the coax from his radio, and coincidentally parked behind his Honda van with his license plate on, which we have ran. It is his license plate. Uh, that's where the tape loop and the querming comes from, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a public service announcement for 29 RSY. Why is that, guys? Tell me that story again, Dan. I didn't catch all of it. This is NHJ, I think. Yeah, we, uh, we sent a friend of ours that lives about 20, 30 miles from that location. Sent him over there while he was playing the uh, canine RSY and Lauren Smith tape, which has been played here every day for hours and hours and hours. But anyway, uh, that recording was coming from the residence of Michael J. McGrigian at 3023 Panorama Point Way. And uh, that has been confirmed. Okay. The, the, the van he was talking about. Pardon me? Yeah, did you say that he had a van uh, uh, he was driving around in, or was that the guy with the uh, No, no, no. The guy with the uh, man was right there at his house. Uh, no, he's got a Honda a van uh, with a license plate uh, on the back. Handicap plate, by the way. And uh, he has another van uh, uh, sitting there right close to the house by a wheelchair ramp. He's got a little uh, 40-meter dipole with a radio shack rotor on top of a push-up pole and a couple of dipole wire antennas. And I think it looks like maybe a two-meter vertical or something over there in the yard. Yeah. That is his big, monstrous, elaborate array. Hello. Hello, Kevin. Amazing that uh, we all figured that that, uh, that he didn't have a, a or a trailer to throw it on. How in the world he can get by with broadcasting those tapes for hours on hours, and the FCC hasn't done nothing about it. Is it's beyond me. Yeah, it is kind of strange, isn't it? Especially when he's playing the tape. About <laughs> about FCC's high efficiency DFing monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. There, uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know how highly efficient HF DF they are, but uh, I know that the amateur radio operator I sent over there had no problem whatsoever. Pull up, pull the coax out of the back, and guess what? Still pinned over in the corner. Well, there's no doubt it's him. I mean, you know, he, uh, and he's been at this well over a year now. Over a year. That is correct. Well, anyway, Dan, uh, I can hear you on this morning. I had UPS delivered me a new radio yesterday, and uh, it's, uh, I can't 